What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 tool tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to use the Pattern Along Path tool in order to create repeating objects along paths inside of your models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So people use this tool for a lot of different things. For example, they use it for anything from creating objects that follow along paths, um, like uh, any kind of fencing or anything like that. They also use it to copy features like holes that have been cut in objects so that they can follow faces. So in, in its simplest format, basically the way this tool works is let's say that we were to draw a rectangle. So if I was to draw a rectangle like this and then extrude it up, we can use it in order to copy that object along a path. So let's say for example that we were to create a sketch with a curving line. So if I was to use the fit point spline in order to draw a line that curves, Oops. Like this one. We could then use this in order to make this object or copy this object along this curve. So the way that that would work is we would activate the tool by going into our create menu, going down to pattern, we're going to find the option for pattern along path. So what pattern along path is going to do is it's going to copy this object along a path that we select. So the way that's going to work is we're going to select our object and we're going to want to make sure to set this to bodies and we'll select this body right here and then we'll select this path and so notice at the moment that it gives you a warning that's because we haven't given it a distance so if you click and drag this arrow you can see how this will allow you to basically create copies along this path and notice that this kind of snaps to the end point here when you drag this along so once you do that you can set the number of copies that are created along this path and notice that the path is driving the direction that these are facing. So the more of these I create, the more it inserts, all of which are along this path. And right now what they're doing is they've maintained the same identical orientation. There's also an option to set them so they follow the path direction, which gets a little bit weird when they're this close to the path. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. So you can set this um, kind of like the uh, rectangular pattern tool, you can set this so that these either go by an extent or by spacing. So if I wanted to do this by spacing, I could set a certain number of these a certain distance apart from each other. So for example, if I wanted these to be every three inches, I could set this to create a copy three inches along a path. And I'm going to right click on this and click on edit feature. But notice that at a certain point we run out of path, but it's still creating these because we told it to create copies. It'll create these along a straight line off from this point. So you can do either spacing and let's say we were to make the spacing a lot shorter. So let's say it was like a quarter inch or something like that. You can see how this would copy these along these path like along this path like this. Now one thing I want to point out, and we're going to set this back to extent. The distance from the path is going to affect the way this works. So let's say I was to click OK, then we were to move points from the path. You're going to notice that these objects are going to move along with this. So this is going to adjust dynamically. And notice that it's not adjusting dynamically all the way because we don't have enough copies created. So we want to make sure to set this to our end and then we can adjust the number of copies that are in here but notice that wherever I take this path this is going to follow along that. So you can also use this to copy features. So let's say for example that we had a plate like this one and we'll give it a little bit of thickness. So I'll just tap the E key to activate the extrude tool. We'll give it some thickness. Well now let's say that we were to cut a hole in this face. So we'll just create a sketch with a little circle right here and we'll extrude that hole through the surface using cut mode. So you can see how that cut a hole. Well what we can do is not only can you use this to copy bodies, you can use it to copy features. So if I was to create a sketch on this face and let's say we had a curve that kind of ran along our face like this. And we'll try not to make this too complicated. I probably already did, but we'll finish that sketch. Well, now if we were to run the rectangular pattern or the uh, pattern on path tool, we just want to make sure we set this to features instead of to bodies. And from a feature standpoint, we want to select this hole and we want to select our path right here. 
And you can see how what this will allow us to do is this will allow us to actually duplicate those holes that we've created along this object. And we can create as many of these as we want to. So let's say we were to create 20 of them and click on OK. What that did is that copied the holes that we have created in here along this path and they're equally spaced with 20 copies. So you can use this to not only um, copy objects along paths like this, you can also use it to copy features along paths. There's also some interesting applications for this if you were to combine it with like the join function or something like that. So let's say for example that we were to run this uh, pattern along path and we would select bodies, select this object, then select this path, like this. You could set this so that it creates a number of different copies of this object and click on OK. Well then you could select them all and use the modify tool in order to combine them into a single object. So you could use this to create overlapping geometry that the, you could then combine together using the uh, modification tools as well. So there's a lot of different interesting things you can do with the pattern along path tool inside of Fusion 360. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know about this tool? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.